all right welcome back to another lesson i hope that you've gone through the work in chapter 11 because now we can dive right into it so in this chapter we're talking about respiration and energy so energy is needed for muscles require energy for contraction protein synthesis requires energy to join amino acids together cellular division requires energy for repair and regeneration active transport requires energy to move substances into or out of cells neural transmissions require energy to transfer information across neural pathways and then heat production also requires energy to regulate the temperature and maintain equilibrium this energy comes from food that we eat food is digested and absorbed in the small intestine it goes to into the bloodstream from the small intestine and to cells of the body once glucose is taken up to the cells of the body glucose uh, gets used in energy metabolism and this is the chemical form of energy this energy comes from the food that we eat and the most common source of energy is glucose so glucose or C6H12O6 that's the chemical structure is actually used in aerobic respiration as well as anaerobic respiration in aero aerobic respiration bluebird in aerobic respiration glucose glucose which is which reacts with our oxygen from the air we breathe and this results in carbon dioxide and water energy is also produced glucose is combined with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide the what we breathe out the byproduct as well as energy this is a very efficient process if oxygen is not present anaerobic respiration occurs here glucose is converted to a alcohol product as well as carbon dioxide and this is not as efficient anaerobic respiration uh, occurs in an absence of oxygen and what happens is glucose gets broken down and produces a alcohol a quick tip if you want to identify an alcohol look out for the hydroxyl group the OH if athletes train intensely and oxygen demand is not met the body switches from anaerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration this is where glucose gets converted uh, and lactic acid is produced this lactic acid makes you feel stiff and sore the next day if athletes train really intensely and they actually exceed the their oxygen demand which is the amount of oxygen that they can breathe in they go they switch from aerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration however this is not efficient as we previously stated it results in lactic acid which makes you feel stiff and sore now go take a look at table 11.1 and quickly re uh, sketch the table and summarize it for yourself you need to do this I'll give you a moment no seriously actually go do it okay let's go back into it so gaseous exchange in humans we get our glucose through our diet plants however get their glucose from photosynthesis they actually produce their own glucose inside the lungs the alveoli allows the oxygen to go into the bloodstream but now let's take a look at how oxygen actually enters from our environment into our lungs here we take a look at how air travels from the, our surroundings to our lungs to the alveoli so air is breathed in via the nose or the mouth the nose has hairs which filter air as well as humidifies it and moistens the air the air goes then to our trachea here we have a structure called the epiglottis and this closes the trachea when we swallow it prevents food from going down the wrong hole rings of cartilage in our trachea keep this pipe structure open air then goes further to our bronchi here the bronchi divides into two 
main branches, the right and the left branches. These go to the right and the left lung. Once inside the lung, they keep branching uh, to produce smaller pipes called bronchioles. The bronchioles eventually form alveoli. The alveoli is a tiny air sac at the end of a bronchiole. The nose, the trachea and the bronchus all contain cilia which move mucus containing bacteria and dust to the back of the throat to be swallowed. Hydrochloric acid in the stomach kills the organisms and prevents you from getting sick. We breathe in the oxygen. Uh, in plants, oxygen simply diffuses in. So we have our surroundings. There's plenty of oxygen on the outside. Um, and this oxygen needs to cross this thin barrier to enter the organism. The barrier has the following property. It has to be thin to allow the oxygen to cross. It has to be close to the transport system, such as vasculature, or, uh, which is the blood supply. It has to have a large surface area so plenty of oxygen can enter and it has to have a good supply of oxygen. Alveoli um, has all these properties of a barrier that is highly successful in helping oxygen diffuse across it. It's only one cell thick which, is, which makes it really 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 thin. This makes the oxygen uh, this actually helps the oxygen to pass over the barrier really easily. Alright, let's take a look at breathing movements. So, in our body we've got a structure called the diaphragm. This is an elastic muscular structure. When we want to breathe in, signals get sent from our brain to our diaphragm to contract. This pulls the diaphragm down. We also have uh, external intercostal muscles which are the muscles in your between your ribs located here when we want to breathe in they also contract and these muscles pull our ribs up or out and up both these the diaphragm and the external intercostals increase the space inside our lungs this causes a negative pressure which pulls air in through our mouth this is how we breathe in now when we want to breathe out the diaphragm muscles relax as well as the external intercostals. This decreases the space in our chest, thus our lungs, and we air gets expelled out. If we want to breathe air forcefully out, such as that, then the internal intercostals contract. Now, when we exercise, our energy and breathing rate get affected. And when we exercise, a process called aerobic respiration occurs to provide us with this energy that we need. So glucose combined with oxygen reacts and this gives us carbon dioxide and the energy that we need. Let's take a look at some examples. For example, if we are walking, we have a moderate breathing rate and a moderate increase in heart rate. This is caused because we have a moderate oxygen demand. When we start jogging, there's an increase in our breathing rate as well as our heart rate. This is caused by increased oxygen demand. Now if we start running, there's a much higher breathing rate and a much higher heart rate. This is because there's a high oxygen demand. Now, say we start sprinting for really long, there's an intensely increased breathing rate and a really, really fast heart rate. Eventually, we reach a limit where the oxygen demand is exceeded and aerobic respiration can no longer occur because there's not enough oxygen for the reaction to occur. Then, what happens, we switch over to anaerobic respiration. Here, glucose is converted to lactic acid and energy. This is not as effective as aerobic respiration because it produces a lot less energy. However, because there's no oxygen, our bodies does not have a choice. Now, we reach a stage where we can't sprint anymore, so we stop running. However, there's still there's a lactic acid buildup from the anaerobic respiration. So we st the reason why we still keep breathing hard is because this lactic acid has to be now combined with oxygen uh, since there's been this buildup of uh, oxygen debt. Um, lactic acid is combined with oxygen in the liver. Here, there's the breakdown of lactic acid 
and we eventually recover. Now, lactic acid is acidic and when our brain senses a buildup of lactic acid which results in a decreased pH, the brain sends signals to the muscles that control breathing to increase the breathing rate. Alright, let's jump in and go take a look at some past papers. Alright, here we see question 18. The graph shows the rate and depth of a person's breathing before exercise. So here we see the volume of air in the lungs during breathing. This is our volume and here we see time in seconds. So we can see that one breath was taken every two seconds. So oh, every four seconds, sorry. Which graph shows the rate and depth of breathing of the same person immediately after a period of exercise? Well, let's think quickly. What happens during exercise to the rate and uh, depth of breathing? Well, they both increase. The rate and the depth increase. So we need to look for a graph corresponding to an increase in rate and an increase in depth. Let's take a look at A. Here we see that there's a really big increase in the depth of breathing. However, there's no increase in rate. As we can see, the first trial of the graph is situated at four seconds, the same as on our original graph. If we take a look at B, we can see that there is a increase in the rate because by four seconds, two breaths have been taken. However, there's no increase in the depth of breathing. The option C rather, shows that there is a really big increase in depth and in rate um, if you compare it to our original graph. I would say C is going to be our answer. Let's quickly like take a look at D though. The graph starts um, quite higher uh, than our original graph. However, there's no increase in depth. So we can rule D out. C would be our answer. Question 5. Figure 511 shows the human breathing system. Name the structures labeled J, K, L and M. J is our larynx, K would be our trachea and here we can see that it splits to the bronchi, bronchus. So L would be the two bronchi, uh, the L would be a bronchus, M would be our lungs. B. Figure 5.2 shows four sections through groups of alveola and their blood capillaries. So this is the blood capillary uh, over here and over here, over there. And then we've got our alveolus and this is the, um, the walls of the alveoli which are one cell thick. State which diagram N, P, Q or R shows the most efficient gas exchange surface and then give one reason for your answer. Well, let's take a look here at the different options. So Q we can immediately rule out because these cells are really thick and efficient gaseous exchange system uh, is very thin. As well as has a large surface area. P allows the blood capillary to really, really get in there and get up close so the blood exchange uh, is really efficient. If we quickly take a look at R we can see there's a sort of like a space between the blood vasculature and the, alve the walls of the alveola. This is a very inefficient system as uh, oxygen will struggle to diffuse across easily. N also has a gap there and doesn't allow for the maximum uh, amount of contact between the blood capillary and the alveolus. That's I would definitely go with P as our answer and the reason being is that there's an increased surface area for the oxygen to cross over into the blood capillary. C1. State the word equation for aerobic respiration in cells. Well, we know it's glucose, oxygen gives us carbon dioxide and energy. 2. Respiration releases energy. Outline three uses of this energy in the human body. Well, in the beginning I stated the uh, uses of energy. Um, the uses are muscles need energy for contraction. Uh, 
Protein synthesis needs energy to join amino acids. Um, cellular division requires energy to repair and regenerate tissues. Then further reasons that the human body requires energy is active transport needs energy to move substances in or out of cells and neural transmission requires energy to transfer information across uh, neuro, neural pathways and then heat production requires energy to maintain temperature okay that's it for lesson 11 yes it was lesson 11 i hope that you guys enjoyed it good luck with the studying and go and get those good marks also before i go i just wanted to remind you guys that you guys have to read the chapter before watching this video that is the purpose otherwise it's not really going to benefit you so pre-read watch the video summarize and smash those good marks